Okay, leak code 110, balanced binary tree. In this problem, you're given a root of a binary tree, and you want to find out if, it, if it's balanced or not. And they're kind enough to give us a definition of what it means for a tree to be balanced, and it basically says, a binary tree in which the left and right subtrees of every node differ in height by no more than one. Cool. So what does that give us? And basically, if you don't know this already, um, this is referred to, this difference in height is sometimes referred to as a balance factor when we talk about trees. So let's say, for example, we're going to look at this first tree. So we have three going to nine, going to 20, going to 15, and then going to seven. Okay, cool. What are our subtree? What are the subtrees of three? Like, right, not the child nodes, but what are the subtrees? Well, this is a subtree, right? This little, it's just a single left node, but also this is a subtree as well, right? So these are the subtrees of this tree. And we ask ourselves, okay, what is the height difference between these two subtrees? Well, if we look, the height difference between them is just one. So we're good. So this is actually a balanced tree, right? So, and something that's a hint here is that we see in the definition here, it says that the left and right subtrees of every, right? They even italicize the word every, every single node. So we can't just look, we can't just stop here, right? Ideally, this is hinting at a recursive solution. So. Well, let's say we're looking at this. What are the subtrees of 20? Well, they're just these nodes here, right? So we do that comparison. We find that, well, they're on the same level. So that difference in height is zero. So we're still good. Okay. Let's do this other example, example two. So let's draw it out and let's just see how that goes. Just so we can kind of get one more attempt at this on the drawing board here. And then we'll move on with our code. So we have this going to two, then this goes to two, and then this goes to three, this goes to three, uh, this goes to four, and then this goes to four. Okay, cool. What do we have here? Well, let's look at our left and right subtrees. Our right subtree is going to be just this two. And then our subtree over here, right, is going to be this big tree right here. We can already tell that the difference in height between these two subtrees is bigger than one, right? I think it's going to be my drawing's kind of bad, but I think the difference in height here is going to be two levels, right? So this is not a balanced um, subtree or a balanced tree, sorry. Okay, let's see this in action though with the code. Okay, so we already know, we kind of saw that we were computing heights when we were talking about our, in the drawing board, right? We're, we're comparing heights. So I think it's best to just make a function to just get the height of a tree. So let's do get height and we'll pass in this uh, root right here. Cool. Okay. So we do that. How do we get the height? Well, it's pretty easy to get the height of a tree. Right, because basically we're going to say, okay, what if we don't have a root? If we don't have a root, we'll just immediately return zero. Right? And then we want to get the left height and the right height. So we'll just say, okay, let's do int left height. Well, that's going to equal to a recursive call to get height, and we'll call we'll pass this down to the left. We'll pass in our left child, right? Because we want to go down the left side. We're going to say, okay, what's the right height? We're going to do get height of uh, the right, right? We're going to pass in our right child, if I can spell. All right, we're going to recursively go in. So like if we're, for example, let's say we start here. We want to recursively call it, well, I want, to get, I want to get the height of this, and now I want to get the height of all this, and we just keep recursively doing this until we get to like a base case, right? Because in the base case, we just return a zero, right? If there's no more roots. Cool. And at the end of it all, though, to get the height, what we need to say is, let's just return 
right? So every recursive call returns this. Since we just entered a new level, right? Since we passed in a left or we passed in a right, right? That means we're going from somewhere. So that's a, we're coming from a level. So we automatically add a level. And then we take the maximum between the left height and the right height. And this is all the code to basically get the height of these of this tree. So no matter what subtree you have, we can get the height this way. But we also talked about this idea of a balance factor, right? The difference in heights. And we can actually do this right here, right? Just to do it all in one helper function. So we already have two, we have the left height and we have the right height that we're getting recursively right here, right? So we, we already have access to these. And we know that in here it says every node. So we should be doing this check every single time. So we just say, okay, if let's say, um, or before that, we'll say int balance factor is going to be equal to the absolute value within the left height and the right height. All right, so every at every node, we're comparing the heights of the subtrees. And then we say, okay, if the balance factor is ever bigger than uh, one, right? Or um, we're gonna, or actually, yeah, I think if the balance factor is ever bigger than one, what we want to do is we just wanna return a negative one. Right, so if the balance factor is ever bigger than one, we're gonna return negative one. So this is gonna be our sign to our helper function, right? Or when we receive something from our get height function, we know that a negative height is impossible. So we should just use that as a kind of hint to ourselves logically that, hey, the balance factor has been broken. And now that I think about it, I think we should actually do this as well. So we say if balance factor is bigger than one or, if we ever come back and the left height is also negative one. That means we returned from the left height recursive call. And we found out that a subtree on the left side has a broken, has an invalid balance factor. And I think I should do the same thing for the right height, make that equal to negative one. So we're basically saying, okay, if the current balance factor is bigger than one, or if any of the recursive things we've done in the past has shown that it's going to be a negative uh, height, we know that the balance factor is skewed, so we'll return negative one. And I think that should be good. They give us another example here. So if there's nothing, we're gonna return true. So I'm gonna say if there's no root, we're just gonna immediately return true, right? Because a tree with nothing in it, it's pretty balanced, you know? Um, otherwise we'll return, we'll get the height of uh, the root, right? So we'll do that. And if it's equal to negative one, Right? If that's a thing, if it if equals negative one, we'll return false. This tree's not balanced. Otherwise, we'll just return true. So let's run this code, see if it or doesn't work. Let's go. Um, there we go. Got a little arrow. And this doesn't work either. Do, 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 because I forgot to do minus. I want the difference. There we go. Example test cases. True, false. Awesome. They work. Let's submit. See if that runs. There you go. It works. Submit again, maybe you can get a better runtime. Cool. Third time's a charm, maybe? Get even faster? There we go. Okay, so uh, runtime. Runtime's going to be O of N, right? It's linear uh, with the amount of nodes you have in the tree. It could be that you have to go all the way down to the very, very bottom to find out the truth. And t uh, space complexity. Again, recursion usually implies an implicit stack. Because every time you call a recursive function, right, the return value gets put on this, this stack. And that's also going to scale linearly with the size of your tree. So linear runtime, uh, linear time complex or linear runtime, linear space complexity. Pretty tricky problem though, I'll say. Um you kind of have to know like what a balance factor is. I feel like if you get this in an interview and you don't get this hint you might be like, you know, stuck for a little bit, but pretty cool problem. Um, so all there is really to it. Um, it took me a while to get it at first. I had to get some help, but yeah, I hope this video helped you. And uh, yeah, thank you.